20 years ago, uh, there was discussions that eventually we're going to need another bridge, that uh, the population is booming on the other side of the bridge. Uh, and as uh, the military bases are expanding, the Bangor base and the nuclear base was under construction, people said, you know, eventually we're going to need a bridge. So long-range planning, people were starting to talk about it in the, in the early 80s, and then as the years went by, it became clearly more and more of a priority. The existing bridge was built in uh, the 50s, opened in the 50s, and uh, it, was, it was designed to take about 30,000 cars per day. These days, uh, the bridge sees about 80 to 90,000 cars per day, and uh, thus a, a need for a new bridge. The option that was picked was uh, parallel suspension bridges, and that suspension bridge being as close to the existing bridge was placed that way because of a lot of constraints due to right-of-way. Uh, there was less impact to the community. We met with a contractor early on to talk about setting up some community resources to get out into the community, uh, make sure people know what you're going to be doing before you do it. Uh, people can get used to traffic problems that they know are going to be temporary. Today, 50,000 people converged on the bridge to check it out. I can't stop taking pictures. It is so wonderful, absolutely beautiful. Awestruck families snapped photos and waited in line for their chance to cut an opening day ribbon. It's amazing. It's. It's a work of art for sure. Don and Dave Boffman came out to see the bridge with their 10-month-old son. And it's just a neat piece of history and our little guy gets to walk across for the first time. Altogether, workers spent three and a half million man hours constructing the bridge. It's just one for the memory books. And for the record books, the Narrows Bridge, about one mile from shore to shore, is one of the largest suspension bridges in the country. It was built over the last five years by men and women who were challenged by the elements every day. You, you just can't imagine being up there when the wind picks up to 60 mile an hour. But not one life was lost and only four injuries occurred, making it one of the safest transportation projects in state history. Like I said, there are so many people to thank from those who did the engineering to those who literally brought pieces here in the air, on the water, in trucks, to those who put in three and a half million hours to make this happen, not on days like this, but on days in which the weather was really quite terrible through all the seasons we have in our state. These people are the finest skilled labor found anywhere in the world, the men and women of the construction and building trades, amazing craftspeople. Thank you for all that you have done. This is an engineering feat for which every one of us here in this great state can be very proud.